We've been talking about sex and intimacy a lot on this channel. And because y'all a little nasty, we gonna keep this conversation going. Everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Keandra Jackson Show. I am your host, licensed marriage and family therapist, Keandra Jackson. Over the years, I've done a lot of work with couples and it's inevitable that sex and intimacy always pops up. And I mean always. And even though I've worked with those people well, I am no sex expert, but one of the things that I do keep seeing ongoing all over the internet and social media is that people think that their sex game is the best. They think that there is no room for improvement. And that is the furthest thing from the truth. All of us on the whole entire planet, all of us in the whole entire world can be good at sex. Somebody got to be whacked. So in this episode, we are going to get into it and break down some of the sex tips that you didn't even know that you needed, some misconceptions, and also what to do if your partner's sex game is not where it needs to be and you want to gently tell them without hurting their feelings. We gonna talk about it all today. So I had to bring on my girl. She knows this topic all too well, and that is Dr. Jacqueline Sherman, AKA Dr. Jack. She is a licensed clinical psychologist. She is a certified y'all relationship and intimacy expert she is the creator of sex formation cards and has been seen in these media streets in essence exo nicole black brides and so much more so please allow me to welcome to the show dr jack dr jack, dr. jack thank you so much for joining me on the keandra jackson show you have no idea how excited i am to have you today because we got some juicy stuff that we need to talk about I am so excited to be here. And yes, this is a very juicy topic and a necessary one. So thank you so much for having me. Of course, of course. I mean, this is a topic that so many of us talk about or think we know about, you know, because sex and intimacy is not always typically the same thing. And we're going to get into that in a quick second. But I do know that you are an expert in this topic. When I was trying to figure out who I needed to bring on, I was like, I already know the person. Dr. Jack it is because she's dope. Her brand is amazing. And so I am just here for this conversation that needs to be expanded because what I have experienced is that people think they automatically think that they're good in bed. Just automatically. <laughs> you ain't never lied. <laughs> and I keep trying to tell people that good sex is a skill set, right? Like you don't ever, everybody on the face of this planet can't just be good in bed. Like somebody gotta be whacked. Somebody needs to, you know, improve, have some progress. And so since this is a topic that so many of us probably feel like we don't need because they think that they're good in bed, I'm gonna gather some people to give them some tips because there are some areas where we can always show improvement. And depending on if you have a partner, if you're married or even have a, multiple partners, you know, depending on what your preference is, everybody likes different things. So what would you say is your definition of intimacy? I think that for one, I appreciate you asking this question because a lot of times we think intimacy equals sex and it's so much more than that, right? So we need to really get rid of that idea and expand it because intimacy is really the physical and emotional connectedness that you build with someone. And it's having that deep connection, it's having that vulnerability and sex can be a part of that and it can be an amazing part of that, but it is not everything. And for a lot of people, they need more than just sexual intimacy to be able to really cultivate the intimacy that they want and need in their life. That's so good because you're right. It's not just the physical part, but it's that emotional connection that typically we want to have with our partner. Now, for the people who just thotting and botting and just out here in these streets and they don't want to connect with nobody, look, this is, I don't know if this is a conversation for you, but this is a conversation that is intentional for the people who do want to have a thriving sex life, but also have that very deep intimacy. So if someone was saying, okay, Dr. Jack, I hear what you're saying, this whole intimacy thing, but can you really break it down in very simple terms of like, what is the difference between intimacy and sex? Because I still think that people get those things wrong and we use those interchangeably in our society for some reason. Yeah, you know, so I like to think about sex as being an action. So it's something that you do. 
Intimacy is a feeling. It's an emotion of closeness that you have with an individual. And so even to break it down further, there's emotional intimacy, there's physical intimacy, there's sexual intimacy. Those can be different, right? We can be holding hands that can be intimate, but we may not be having sex. There's also spiritual intimacy. There is intellectual intimacy and there's experiential intimacy. So you can think about intimacy and in all of these different facets and expand really the worldview of what intimacy looks like. Because if you only think about it being sex, you're missing out on all those other components. That's so good. That's so good and juicy. I think I have a video on my channel where I talk about the five different levels of intimacy. And I also even throw in financial intimacy because people don't even realize that that's a thing. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna add that one. <laughs> because there's a way that you can blend money and be intimate with your partner through finances. And so I love that you were able to break down the differences between sex and intimacy for those who just didn't know that there was a difference or for the people who use them interchangeably for some reason. So because you are the intimacy expert, I was all up in your stories when you was on vacation or wherever you was at with your man, with your husband. Y'all was all booed up, sexed up in the pool. You were giving intimacy tips. I said, hold on, this is spicy over here. And I love every single bit of it. So for the people who want to keep it spicy in the bedroom, who want to satisfy their partner, what are like some of your best top tips? I mean, tippity top, top, top tips that you can give to people who are ready to say, nah, I'm going all in and I want my sexual experience with my partner to be amazing. So first I wanna say, I had the bomb trip in the Maldives. I appreciate you, you know, shouting that out. We had a really good time and it was spicy and it was intimate. But I will say that one of my top tips is making sure that you are communicating about sex. Sexual communication, this is liberation. And for couples that are out there having sex, but they're never talking about it, trust me, you are not having the sex that you could be having because it could be excellent. It might be good, but it could be excellent if you started communicating around it. And so I often tell people having regular conversations about sex is going to intensify your sex life. You're gonna normalize being able to give feedback to one another and get on the same page. Secondly, Talk about your fantasies and your desires. So often we have shame about what our fantasies are, those things that we may think about that turn us on sexually and we don't want nobody to know. But if you're trying to have excellent, mind-blowing sex with your partner and they don't even really know what you're into, you are missing out on an opportunity to connect with them on a very intimate level sexually because you're sharing with them some of your desires and the things that you're into. And you can incorporate those things into the bedroom through role play, which is my other tip, right? A lot of times we think about, so say for example, if I have a fantasy that I wanna have a threesome, this doesn't mean that I actually have to have one. For whatever reason, I may not be in a phase of my life where that's something that I wanna do. It may be against my values for whatever reason, right? So say if that is the case, you can incorporate role play into your sex life and you can play out you having a threesome. You can act like someone else is there. You can play the other person. There's so many ways that you can increase your experience with sex by utilizing your fantasies and playing them out through role play. And lastly, I will say edging is amazing. Okay. I don't, I haven't met anybody who does not enjoy or appreciate orgasm. And what edging does is it helps you prolong your orgasmic experience. So what you're really doing is you are building up to experiencing an orgasm, but you're doing it with intentionality and mindfulness. You're also using breath work to slow down your experience and you are actually going to increase sexual stimulation. Then you're going to stop it. Then you're going to increase it. Then you're going to stop it. Then you're going to increase it again. And by the time you climax you are going to feel amazing you've prolonged that experience and you've intensified it for yourself girl you <laughs> it was the role play for me it was to tell your partner the sexual fantasies it was the stop and start the, it was the build up on the organ listen if you this is like x-rated almost i just feel like this is real juicy this was so helpful. 
it, when you were talking, it reminded me of a conversation that I was having with one of my homegirls. I'm not going to put her on blast on here. But she was sharing how her and her partner does like role play and how he loved like the teacher student dynamic and, you know, just real fun things to incorporate some type of creativity in the bedroom. And so you are right. If you're not doing something fresh, something new, thinking about new ways to spice it up, different locations, different places in and out in and outside of the house okay you know you <laughs> you you are literally missing out and so i love those tips i think that that is one of those three tips right there alone can be a game changer for anybody who's listening but i know that there's also a subset of people who are like okay cool i have pretty good sex with my partner but there are times where he or she may do something that i don't particularly like i'm not a big fan of that i don't know if that's you know arousing me or i feel uncomfortable when things are done and i know and I know that you mentioned communication being a big part of that. So we know we definitely want to verbalize when we're uncomfortable, when we're unsafe, when something hurts, you know, things of that nature. And even incorporating like a, um, a safe word, you know, or something of that nature when things are like, ooh, I don't know if I'm really here for that. But what would you say to someone who's saying, okay, I still want to enhance my sexual experience with my partner, but he or she does things that I don't particularly like, but I don't want to hurt their feelings. And I don't know how to convey that outside of just the regular communication of telling them directly. What would you say to someone who has a question about that? This is such a good question because one, I want to normalize that you are not alone. Trust me, we have all been there to where our partner is doing something where it's supposed to be giving and it's not. And it's like, okay, do I say something? Do I not say something? How do I navigate this? And a lot of times we don't have the language. And so instead we just hold the information in. I want us to stop doing that right now, right? Cause I'm going to give you a tool and a strategy that will help you be able to successfully navigate this dynamic every single time with success. So I, you, I tell people, utilize the sandwich method. One, remember, you're not, you're not responsible for your partner's feelings. But if you address any type of your sexual concerns or feedback with compassion, that's all you can do. How they feel about it, that's not your responsibility. So take that off of you and utilize this method and you will have success. Now with the sandwich method, what you're really gonna do is you're gonna focus on praise. You're gonna hit them with the praise because you're complimenting them and you're sharing something that you like, it's much easier than to, than to share something that you want to look different. And so how I usually encourage people to do this technique is you want to start with complimenting something that they're doing well. There has to be something, right? They may be kissing you really well. Maybe you guys have started extending foreplay and you're really enjoying that. Like foreplay is more of a part of your sexual experience. So you can share that with them. Hey, babe, I have loved that we have been having more foreplay lately. It has been really good and I've been enjoying it. There's the compliment. There's the praise. Then you want to add in maybe what you want to look different. I read online recently that clitoral stimulation is where it's at. And I know when we do foreplay, you more so focus on my nipples, which I used to like, but they're more sensitive now and it doesn't really feel that good. So that's gonna be the, that's gonna be the middle of the sandwich. Then you wanna end with a way that you all can collaborate together to work on your sex life. Next time, can we focus more on clit stimulation? That's something that I really think that I would enjoy. And I can even give you feedback as you're doing it to share with you if it's feeling good or not. What do you think, right? So that's very different than saying, listen, I need you to get off my nipples. They hurting, it don't feel good. I need you to focus on the clip bay. A very different conversation, right? And so utilizing the sandwich method helps you to express yourself, but you have a strategy, you have a technique and you're gonna start with the praise. You're gonna give them the feedback. Then you're gonna end with creating some type of collaborative way that you all can work on your sex life together. Ooh, 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 that was good. If y'all are not writing things down, you probably need to whip out your notebook. This is the time to do that. The sandwich method is a game changer. I know we use that a lot in just communication in general, but I never thought about it from the aspect of sex, right? And unfortunately, like you mentioned, we are not in control of our partner's response or any of those things. The only thing that we can do is control us. So if you do the sandwich method and for some reason he or she was still not receptive, then we got a different problem. 
that we need to talk about and we need to break down in regards to your relationship. But hopefully your partner is aware enough, self-aware enough, and even aware of you enough to say, okay, my partner is trying to come to me with some tips, some tricks, some techniques, some feedback, and I should be open to this if we want to collectively have a better sex life. So that whole sandwich trick, that's the one and the two right there. And I love that you gave us language, right? Because sometimes we tell people, oh, use the sandwich method. And people are like, what's a sandwich method? Like, do I need to go to the corner store and get a sandwich? I need to go to Subway. I need to go to, do I need to make a sandwich in my kitchen? What does this look like? So the fact that you gave us language and gave us an example that can be used in and outside of the bedroom, I'm so here for it. I am completely here for it. So you have gave us so many gems. I mean, tip top best information that I personally have ever heard on this topic. So what would you say to the people who want to stay connected with you? Cause there's gonna be people listening and they're gonna be like, who is this Dr. Jack chick? She gave some gems. I want more. I want to learn more. I want to follow her on social. I want to stay, I want to be in her DM and in her stories to see what her and her man is doing. I need to know. So can you please tell them where they can stay connected with you? Absolutely. So listen, you all can find me on Instagram. That's where I hang out the most. So you can find me at, at Dr. Jack PhD. That's D-R-J-A-C PhD. Definitely shoot me a DM. I would love to connect with you. If you have questions, I'm always answering questions and DMs. Um, and also you can visit my website as well. You can go to drjack.co to find more information out about me. And I'm also creator of Sex Formation Cards. So if you're listening to this conversation and you are like, you know what? We haven't really started establishing sex as a topic of conversation. I don't know where to start. I have sex formation cards that basically creates a three-step process to help you build more sexual self-care and communication is a part of that. So there's 25 cards within the deck that will help you build better communication with your partner. So go on over to my website, drjack.co. You can go to the shop page. You can find sex formation cards and definitely stay connected with me um, through Instagram. I love that. We're here for a good resource, honey. Y'all better get y'all cards, okay? Get your cards. I am so here for that, but I don't let anybody leave my show without playing a little game. So would you be willing to have a little fun with me? I'm ready. Let's do Ooh. it. She said she's ready, y'all. She said she's ready. So we are going to play a game called This or That. And it is the lightning speed round where I am going to give you 10 quick questions, and you have to tell me which do you prefer out of the two. So are you ready? I stay ready. <laughs> she said, I stay ready so I don't have to get ready. <laughs> Period. Period. Okay, so question number one, Netflix or Hulu? Netflix. Oop. Night or morning? When it comes to sex, morning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Swimming pool or the ocean? Ocean. Oral sex or intercourse? Choose the this day. Choose. <laughs> She's taking a long time, y'all. She's taking a long time. Oral sex. <laughs> we going with oral. We're going with oral. Okay. okay. Number five is predictability or excitement. Excitement. I love that. Guacamole or salsa? Guacamole. You need to come to Cali. We we <laughs> we all, we with the avocados over here. You need to pull up in Cali. Number seven is owe someone a favor or owe someone money. Owe someone a favor. Okay. The next one is red wine or white wine. White wine. I had a little red last night. Listen, <laughs> I'll take both and on that one. <laughs> Would you say coffee or tea? Definitely coffee. And last but not least, store-bought or homemade? Oh, it's going to be homemade all day. Period. <laughs> and store what? <laughs> We making it from scratch over here. I love it, I love it. Thank you so much, Dr. Jack, for coming on the show, for bringing your energy, your vibe. This was so much fun. You already know that I'm gonna have to bring you back for another part two sometime Absolutely. soon. And thank you again for your time. 
Man, look, I tried to tell y'all that Dr. Jack was nothing to be played with. My final thoughts on this topic is that sex and intimacy looks very different for each and every individual, but also for each and every couple. So no matter where you find yourself on this continuum and on this spectrum, it's important for you to know for yourself what your wants, needs, desires, goals, fantasies are as an individual, but also having that conversation with your partner to know theirs too. And then y'all can come together and see how y'all can make this happen. Because as Dr. Jack mentioned, once you build that communication and once you know that you can talk to your partner about anything, it just opens up the sex. It opens up the intimacy to go to a completely different level. And who don't want their sex life to go up and stuck? or whatever Cardi says. So thank you so much for watching another episode of the Keandra Jackson Show. And look, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.